thank you so much for stopping back by. Today, we are gonna smoke corned beef. Now I know it's kind of that time of year, right? We're not too far from St. Patty's Day. My mom is Irish and every year she asks me, did you have your corned beef and cabbage? Are you wearing green? Well today, I'm gonna try and do one up here. I'm gonna go ahead and smoke our corned beef instead of just boiling it in a pot. So, this is gonna be phenomenal. I have here about a five pound corned beef brisket flat. Now, you can buy a, a plain brisket and, and corn it or, or brine it, if you will. Uh, I just went ahead and bought the one that's in the package. It comes with a little flavor packet, which I saved. We'll show you what we do with that a little bit later. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on trimming this a little bit. Um, I don't wanna cut all this fat off, but I definitely wanna get some of it off of here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work my knife in here and try and get some of this removed. Now, I'm not a fan of removing all of it. I actually think it helps, helps with some moisture and some flavor as well. When you get a corned beef and you buy a package of it, you're typically getting essentially the brisket flat, not the point. Um, so you can kind of see that here, right? Like you can actually see, here's the flat. This one has a little bit of the point meat on it. So I'm gonna have a fat layer between here and then also on the top. Over here. Yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. Now the last thing you want to do, and this happens sometimes on the edge of where a brisket is cut, you want to remove any meat that looks a little bit gray. Like you see how this is nice and pink on this side, looks a little gray on this side? I like to come in here and just slice that little bit right off of there. have that nice pink looking meat there. Now's also a good time to look and see the orientation of the grain. And we can see the grain runs this way on this. So when we go to cut this up, I'm gonna remember that right where the point is, that's gonna aim at the spot where I'm gonna cut it. That'll be my way of remembering which way to cut this. You wanna go against the grain when you cut it. Keeps it nice and tender. We're gonna go ahead and prepare a dry rub for this. When you buy a prepared corned beef where it's already been pickled, essentially, uh, it comes with a little packet of seasoning. It typically is, um, there's a couple of different things, but it's usually ground bay leaves, some pepper, a little bit of um, dill seeds and mustard seeds, sometimes coriander. What we're gonna do is we wanna build a bark. We save that packet, we're gonna use that later, but we wanna build a bark on this, a lot like you would sort of any other brisket. Um, corned beef tends to be pretty pepper forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some salt, about equal portions of um, salt and pepper. And if you can use a coarse ground black pepper, that's even better. This is not, so I'll probably be sneezing in a minute. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic as well. Um, I'd say about one third of the amount of garlic as there was pepper and salt. I'm gonna do my best to mix this up and hopefully not start sneezing like crazy. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sprinkle this on here and remember, when you put a rub on brisket, you tend to pat it down. You don't want to rub it, ironically enough, given the name is rub. And we're going to put some right underneath this point on both sides, too. You want to get good coverage all the way around on this thing. You want to get this covered really well all the way around. I wouldn't say we're trying to build a bark on it, but we want to put the seasoning on just as if we were trying to build a bark. And the reason I say we're not building a bark is we are going to end up braising this later. So that moisture will sort of um, kind of undo some of the barkiness, if you will. But we want this to be unbelievably tender, as corned beef should be. You'll notice I'm going on the sides of this too. We don't want to ignore those sides. All right, I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna do the same thing on the back side here. And this is the side where there's not the fat cap. Sometimes people will ask, well, how much rub do you put on there? About that much. Like, I don't have an exact science here. What I like to do is typically just let this sit for a little bit. And, uh, and the moisture from the meat will wick out and sort of form this and make it look glistening. That's how we know we'll be ready. And we're going to cook this, actually, fat cap 
up. So I'm gonna cook it that direction with that little point up. And we're gonna cook it on the upper rack, indirect heat. Let me wash my hands up. While you're letting the brisket rest, go ahead and fill up your pellet hopper and get your smoker fired up. We're using a combination of hickory and oak, and we're gonna go ahead and crank this up at 225. And we're gonna smoke it for a few hours at 225. We wanna get to about that stall temperature, somewhere between 160 and 170 degrees. And that's where the meat continues to increase in temperature. And then it gets to that 160s or so, or 165, right around there. And it sits for a while and it doesn't get hotter. It takes a good 45 minutes or so before it starts to warm back up again. During the stall is when we want to take it out and instead of wrapping it in like butcher paper like we would if we were doing a good Texas smoked brisket, we're actually going to braise it. I'll show you how we go about doing that. All right, let's let that rest for a few more moments. We're going to put it right in the top shelf and we're going to do fat cap up. All right, let's get this guy in here. As I mentioned before, I want to do this fat cap up and I have that small point right up there. There we go. So just under three hours in, this thing got up to about 158 degrees and it stayed there a while. It started entering that stall state, if you will. I left it in for a while longer, almost another full hour. It's been about three hours and 45 minutes elapsed at this stage and it's up to about 168 degrees. So it started climbing again. It tells me we're just getting to the end of the stall period. I'm gonna go ahead and probe it in a couple other places with my uh, quick read thermometer just to make sure that the probe we have in there is accurate. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go ahead and put this in a braising liquid to get it unbelievably tender. This is looking really nice. So I'm at about 150 over there. Go through that point and tip here. 161 there. What you're gonna need is one of these little disposable pans or a roasting pan if you don't wanna use a disposable one. That's where we're gonna go ahead and put it in along with some liquid to braise it and get it really tender. Now, if you recall, I talked about this little package that comes with the corned beef. You can see the little dill seeds, mustard seeds, little bay leaf in there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and I've got a little mortar and pestle here and I'm just gonna grind this up. Now, I'm just gonna grind this up a little bit. <clears throat> This is going to add a lot of nice extra flavor to my braising liquid. The little mustard seeds want to jump out. We'll set that aside. Now what we want to do is put our corned beef in here along with some liquid, about an inch of it or so in there. I'm going to use a beef stock. I'm just going to use a bouillon cube and some hot water. So let me go get the water. We'll put our beef right in here and then we will um, pour our liquid over it, seal it up with foil, pop it back in at a slightly higher temperature. All right, we just have some hot water here. And I gotta tell you a funny uh, story about this, this bouillon. Uh, McKinley and I went into a little Caribbean grocery store and right on the counter, they had a bunch of these individually wrapped sitting in little buckets and they were like four for a dollar. She thought they were candy. So I'm like, sure, you can get them. And we open it up and it's real dark. She's like, oh, I guess it's chocolate. So we get in the car, we each open one up and take a bite of it. Oh my gosh, salty and gross just having that right in your mouth. It was crazy. So very funny story that we both had about um, not thinking something's candy when it's not. So the way I do this is I take the bouillon cube and I kind of just put a little bit of water in there and then I start to break it up. Um, found that it dissolves a little easier when I can have just a little bit of water in there and see where it is so I can sort of crush it a little bit. And then once I have that, then I'll go ahead and fill in a lot more of my liquid here. Now this is a nice heavy beef stock. You can see just how dark it is. It'll be good. I'm now gonna go ahead and put in all of my crushed seasonings. Just give that a good stir. Man, it smells amazing. So let's go ahead and grab our corned beef. We're gonna put it right down in here. I'm gonna pour just a little bit of liquid down on the bottom of this just to keep it from sticking. I'm just gonna do the regular water here. Now I'm again gonna cook this with the fat side up. Again, I want that flavor to render on down. Now this is about as small of a pan as I could have used for this. Now we're just gonna go ahead and pour this right around the sides of this. And again, you want it to be about an inch thick or so, maybe let's say halfway up the side of the, the corned beef. Now what I like to do is kind of pay attention to where I'd like to probe this. So I know that I wanna probe it about a third of the way in from this particular side on the right. Now it's important that I kind of keep an eye on that so I know exactly where that is when I carry it back over to the smoker.
I rotated that, so I'm gonna put it back the way it was so I know exactly where I'm going. Now I went ahead and I moved the smoker from 225 degrees up to 250. You could do 300 as well, but I'm gonna do it at 250, mainly because it's only uh, noon or so and we have plenty of time. So in another three to four hours, this should definitely be through. That'll be around dinner time, so that should be just fine. Okay, carry this right over here. Pull it up, and I'm gonna put it again on the top shelf because I don't want that direct heat to scorch the bottom of it. Now, as I mentioned before, I kinda know I wanna go about one third of the way in with my probe. So it's going right through that You can already see the mistake I made there. I need to go at more of an angle. There we go. All right, guys, this is the thing I do once every 10 times I cook in here. I forget to go through the opening in the side of the grill with the thermometer, and then I have to take it out of what I probed, go back through it, and then reinsert. So it's been about another hour and a half. I went ahead and turned the smoker down to 200 degrees because the corned beef um, brisket had already gotten to 200 degrees. So I want to pull it off somewhere around 200. So I want to get that temperature down a little bit. Now remember when you do this, there's a liquid in here. So you want to be very careful that the steam coming out of it doesn't burn you. You should normally open it away from yourself, but I'm not doing what I preach. All right, so I'm gonna probe test this in a couple of different places, being careful not to go all the way down through the tin foil. 195, 203, 201, wow, 210 over here. Okay, this is essentially complete, it's done. Now, because it's in a braising liquid, it's not gonna go ahead and get dried out if we leave it in there a little longer. I wanna do some veggies with this, so I am just doing some little small, um, Yukon Gold potatoes. And I'm just gonna drop these right into the braising liquid here. So I'm gonna slice up some carrots into relatively small sizes. Um, just because I wanna be extra careful they cook a little quicker. Now this guy here is nice and skinny. I'm just gonna cut these in about three inch long pieces or so. And then where they're thicker than about my thumb, I'd say, I'm gonna slice them in half long ways as well. It's not the best knife for that, but it'll do. Now I did wash these, but I did not peel them. I actually like um, whole carrots that are a little bit rustic. I think they, they have a neater look to them. What? possible Irish corned beef meal doesn't come with a little bit of cabbage. So I'm not going to do a ton because there's not a lot of room in this pan. I'm going to go ahead and get some of these bigger leaves off of here. And then I'm just going to slice off, let's say, a corner of this. Let's see, we may end up using more than that, but we'll see here. And then I am just going to Cut this into about one inch chunks or so. And just sprinkle it around in here. Just kind of get some of this cabbage sand submerged in my liquid where I can. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and put this right back in. I'm not even gonna bother probing it. We'll probably do this for about another 35 to 40 minutes just till those vegetables get nice and cooked. All right, we'll see you back here in 45 minutes. We'll open this up and check it out. We are right at another hour and a half. We're gonna go ahead and get this pulled out of here. I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this and we'll show you what it looks like in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna see if these carrots are tender. Ah, just the way we like them. They're, they're not completely mushy, but they are definitely 
cooked all the way through. I'm going to do something a little odd here. I'm going to go ahead and take this out of here and set it right on this tray. Now these are heat proof gloves. Don't do this with just simple little latex gloves. You'll regret it for sure. Now we just want to go ahead and cover this and let it rest for a little bit. Probably about 20 minutes or so. It's be really good. Let's just kind of check all these veggies. Yep, they are all cooked. It's good. I want to give a little bit of these things a try here. A little bit of the carrot. Really good flavor. It's it, it's pulled all of that good beef juice from the broth into it. A little the same with the potatoes. Mm. Flavorful, but god dang, that's hot. Let that cool. <laughs> the cabbage all of that's phenomenal all right I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the burners we'll let this rest a little bit we'll slice it up and show you how it looks it's exactly what we want in that sort of telltale pinkness of a good corned beef as you see when slicing that it just looks phenomenal definitely want to cut it against the grain. Remember I used this point to know exactly where it was pointing to the right section for cutting against the grain. Let's give this a shot. Want to try some? Yes please. You want to try it with the pepper on it? Yes please. It's gonna be good and peppery. <laughs> mm. It's a lot of pepper, isn't it? All of us. That's good. That is good. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, there you go. Smoked corned beef with cabbage, corn, and potatoes. See, Mom? I'm doing St. Patty's Day right. Your Irish heritage will be proud. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Safe and happy grilling. Love you, Mom. <laughs>